Okay, very good afternoon. Uh, today we will start uh, the topics that is design of slabs. Okay. Uh, so when we talk about the slab, then basically what is the slab when the members are basically if you see the floors take an example of floor or roof of any buildings those simply we can say a slab or you can see on the culverts whatever the uh, top parts surface part that is basically a slabs okay that means from those examples if you look at the physically that these things are supported somewhere it cannot be standing on standalone means like a column column is just directly we are putting on the foundation and putting with the column but it is not like that even in the slab itself we have to put some support on the slab this supports may be in terms of column in terms of say wall directly then there suppose if you have building all the walls are there and as well as the column now these supports and the slabs may be connected very closely to each other or maybe just uh, put one a slab over the columns okay so various things are there so to do the design we are not going much detail on how all those uh, uh, formulas and all the different uh, combinations are derived because the slab itself is a complex one okay if we want to uh, do the analysis then the best method is called the yield line analysis of slabs which is not in the purview of this uh, lecture so we are not discussing on that part so we will be basically discussing the guidelines that is proposed in our code book that is is 456 2000 and based on that guidelines we will do the process okay now when we talk about a slab a slab have mainly there are two directions are there okay so, so this is in one direction okay and uh, this is another if you look at this this is a slab okay this slab says the direction in both sides okay let if i say that this is the length in this direction and this is length in the in direction we can give two names there say what i am doing this shorter span i am giving a length of lx generally in slab it is done like the shorter span is given a length of lx and longer span is given a length of ly then what we do we find out the ratio of ly to lx now you check what is this value if this value is greater than 2 okay when this value is greater than 2 we consider that the slab is spanning in one way and generally one way means we design it assuming per unit width okay like a beam okay when this ratio is greater than 2 like a beam it is per unit width it is considered and then in a beam what do we do we mainly design the longitudinal reinforcement assuming that it is a per unit width which is very less okay similarly here in this case also you can do that which is very less so it is assumed as a spanning in one way okay when it is reverse that is less than or equal to up to 2 it is considered that the slab is spanning in two way that means it is called as two way slab span okay in both directions okay in this course uh, we are mainly uh, referring to the NPTEL lectures uh, given in by IIT Kharagpur okay so we are straight away taken their notes and we are trying to explain okay so NPTEL lectures on reinforced concrete slabs developed by IIT Kharagpur we are following this okay so you can see that here two way means slabs here in me what i mean to say that in this case we have to design reinforcements and all the other components in both the directions okay that's why it is called two way slabs that means all the defined aspects of the analysis and design we have to do it in both the directions okay good book has given a guidelines for this in is 456 so basically what we can say that a two-way slab is subjected to mostly to uniformly distributed loads okay because slabs are basically a floor of if you see a building mostly uh, the loads whatever the loads we are applying these loads are movable loads in a building or if you, if you take as example of culvert or even for a bridge also bridge deck or culvert deck just for uh, shaking off say assume that is also a kind of slab 
so this wh what happened there movable loads are there okay it is not uh, fixed loads even in, uh, in our home also residential buildings also office buildings so most of the movable whatever the furniture and all other things we are keeping there that are movable so today i am keeping in a particular location one chair tomorrow it chair may be on a different location so they are movable so we cannot mostly we can say they are movable that means live load we can consider there eh? okay now how to design the slab okay so for design of slabs okay i am not uh, going on details on this structural parts because uh, as this level little bit little bit difficult but simply we can say that here what we can see that slab is divided divided into four parts this triangular parts two triangular parts and one uh, this trapezoidal parts two trapezoidal parts and two triangular parts okay anyway don't uh, look on this uh, because we are not concerning on all the how all these formulas and all those things are coming back okay forget about that part so in case of slab suppose we want to we are interested to know what is the shear force then we can calculate the shear force using this equation well, we know that when we have a udl how to find out the shear force on a udl so it is very simple wl by 2 okay then we can calculate the nominal shear stress tau b equal to bu upon bd so these parts are already known to us it is similar to okay now main part that is coming from here okay this code book this IS 456 has given us a specific guidelines when we have restrained slab. Restrained slab means when the corners of a slab are prevented from lifting. Okay, this that means what it is saying that the corners are rigidly connected with the supporting column or wall or whatsoever it is. Okay, so they are prevented from lifting. Okay that is in they are called the restraint slab. So, restraint slab guideline is given in an exact D. Okay, it is written slab spanning in two directions D point D1 it is given about guidelines for restraint slab. Okay. So, restraint slab. Okay, if you can see this in here it is clearly written that restraint slabs are those whose corners are prevented from lifting due to effects of torsional moments these torsional moments however are not completed as the amount of reinforcement as the amount of reinforcements are determined from the completed area of steel due to positive bending moments depending upon the intensity of torsional moments of defined corners this aspect anyway we will discuss this part okay it is essential to determine the positive and negative bending moment in the two direction of restraint slab depending on the various types of panels and the aspect ratio l y upon l x okay so so could book has given a guideline that whatever the slabs are there the slab is to be divided into two parts mainly one part is the middle strip middle part and the other part is the edge strip so what is that middle part three by fourth of that particular span dimension suppose in x direction it is lx then 3 by 4 of lx will be called as a middle strip and remaining part is the edge strip and this edge strip is equally distributed this side and this side similarly in ly direction also 3 by 4 of the or 75 percent of the ly is the middle strip this part and this remaining two parts are the edge strips and they are equally distributed in both side okay same thing is written here Distance slabs are considered as divided into two types of strips in each direction. One middle strip of wood equal to three quarter of the respective length of the span in the in either direction, and two edge strips. Okay, as shown in this figure. Already I have discussed this part. Okay. Now code book is saying that how to calculate the moment in x direction as well as the moment in y direction. Y direction. If we refer this code book, uh, close number D one point one. Okay, close number D 1.1 you can note down this is available in close number D 1.1. Okay, if you refer this in page number 90 of NXRD IS 456, IS 456, 2000. Okay, it is given the maximum positive and negative moments per unit width in a slab are determined using this equation. Okay, maximum bending moment per unit width in a slab are determined Mx equal to alpha x w l x square and m y equal to alpha x w l y square. 
while doing this calculation we will not take l x and l y rather than we will take the effective length l or assume that this l x is the effective length in x direction and effective length in y direction is the either you can write l y or you can write l y that is uh, no problem any any symbol you can use ok. Now, what is this symbols here this alpha x and alpha y are some coefficients ok depending on the different support conditions and they are available in code book in NXR D table number 26 of page number 91 ok if we refer that I am just uh, writing you for your uh, reference this is available in table number 26 already written in IS 46 and exact D and this is in available in page number 91 ok you can refer the code book and you will find the details that is depending on the different support conditions the values of alpha x and alpha y are given also these values are depending on the ratio of L y to L x ok it is started from ratio of L y to L x is 1 and up to 2 these ratios are given this alpha x is basically varying depending on the ratio of L y to L x ok it start from 1 and it has gone up to 2 whereas alpha y is not varying it is constant for all L y upon L x ok but it is varying depending on the uh, support conditions ok how the support is given ok and if you see this the table there are 9 types of panels ok and there L y by L x I am saying that it is an interval of 0.1 okay. ok. So, like that there are up to 1.5 it is given an interval of 0.1 and then 0.25 interval that means 1, 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 then 1.75 and 2 like that there are 8 intervals are given and 9 different panels are given ok. And this bending moment whatever the bending moment we are calculating here for x direction and y direction that are mainly applicable to the middle strip ok remember these are mainly applicable to the middle strip not to the edge strip to correct this this will not be L y so this will be L x square ok. So, this equation you correct it as per the code book this equation will be m y is equal to alpha x it is not even alpha x it is alpha y ok then w and l x square ok. So, you please correct this equation this equation will be this manner ok it, it is like that maybe by mis printing mistakes they have printed like that. So, it will be like that ok. So, this equation this equation should be like that. in place of alpha x will be alpha y ok and w is ok fine and in place of l y they have written it should be l x as per the code book ok. So, you can refer the code book close number d 1.1 ok alpha and x alpha are coefficient w is the total design load per unit area ok I have not told you design load per unit area that is the value of w ok and then l x and l y the length of the shorter span and longer span respectively and m x and m y the moment at the middle strip spanning in l x and l y respectively ok. So, this way we can calculate what will be the maximum bending moment at the middle strips ok and based on that we have to provide the reinforcements ok. Now, if you go to same uh, NXR D, D2 it is given guidelines for simply supported slab ok something the statements is written like that when simply supported slabs do not have adequate provision to resist torsion at corners and to prevent the corners from lifting the maximum moment per unit width are given by the following equation basically the same equation whatever I it is written earlier the same equation is used only changes there that the value of alpha x and alpha y the value of alpha x in this case and alpha y are for simply supported 2 way slabs are taken from table number 27 if you refer table number 20 7 simply supported slab means uh, the support condition only one type. So, for one type of support conditions there are 
again it start from 1 1 1 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 1.75 2 2.53 up to 3 it is given and uh, different values of alpha y and alpha x is available in table number 27 so we can refer that table in the code books and we can get this values okay so these are simple uh, first part that how to get the design movements once we get the design movement then we have to see the other design consideration how to design it based on the uh, defined guidelines provided in the good books and as well as how to provide the reinforcement at defined location like in middle strip how to provide the reinforcement edge strip how to provide the reinforcement or any other type of reinforcement we need to provide that we will see one by one okay so first one is the effective span to effective depth ratio basically span to depth ratio so in code books if you go to close number 24.1 IS 456 close number 24.1 you will find that it is given what is the span to depth ratio okay so which span is to be taken here it is clearly written that shorter of the two span should be used to determine the span to effective depth ratio that means what it is saying that when finding out that shorter span we are saying that LX is the shorter so LX by D this is the span to depth ratio for span up to 3.5 meter and with mild steel reinforcement the span to overall depth ratio satisfying the limit of vertical deflection for a loads up to 3 km per meter square so two conditions are given one is when the span is this lx is up to 3.5 meter and using mild steel and the load is a maximum of 3 km per meter square then for a simply supported slab the span to depth ratio will be taken as 35 and for continuous slab it will be taken as 40 okay so this is how we have to take the span to depth ratio then some exception are also available that means when it is more than that then what is to be done okay the same ratio should be multiplied by 0 0.8 when high strength deformed bars are used okay so if i go to close number 24.1 I can read the statement that is given on the code book directly for your reference. Just give me a moment. Okay. For slab spanning in two directions, the shorter of the two spans should be used for calculating the span to effective depth ratio. Uh, for two way slabs, for shorter span up to 3.5 meter with mild steel reinforcement, the span to overall depth ratios given below may generally be assumed to satisfy a particle deflection limit of loading class up to 3 km per meter square for simply separated slab it is given 35 and for continuous slab it is given 40 for high strength deformed bars of grade fe415 still the values given above should be multiplied by 0 0.8 okay so these are the guidelines available in the code book to consider the span to depth ratio okay now we'll see how to design the two way slab basically we will be discussing how to provide the reinforcement okay different types of reinforcements are there that is to be provided first is uh, discussed here about the torsional reinforcement okay so i will not discuss torsional reinforcement here rather than i will discuss the other type of reinforcement first and then i will come back to the torsional reinforcements okay So, if you go to the close number uh, D1.3, okay, if I go to close number D1.3, the statement is given like the maximum moment calculated as in D1.1 apply only to the middle strip and no re redistribution shall be made. So, whatever the moment it was calculated using those equation, that should be applicable only to the middle strip only okay that means out of suppose whatever we are saying that we are divided into three strips so okay, this is the middle strip and these are the edge strips so these movements are applicable to the middle strip only and there shall be no redistribution of this movement so 
what about the reinforcing bar reinforcement bar calculated using this moment that is whatever we have calculated as mx and my that should be applicable to middle strip only okay that should be applicable to the middle strips and in addition to that in addition to that we have to do some other treatment that is given in the code book from your d1.4 to d1.6 what are those treatment we will be discussing okay so this is a figure so this figure i can you cannot understand right right now without the re, without reading the statements okay so what are the guidelines given in the code books first we will see those guidelines and then i will show you how the reinforcements are provided here okay so here lx is taken as uh, less than ly so based on that it, the design is uh, this figure is done okay first one if you go to close number d1.4 i will read the statement there and then i will come here and how it is given here it is said the tension reinforcement provided at mid span in the middle strip shall extend in the lower part of the slab to within 0.25 l of a continuous edge or 0.15 l of a discontinuous edge discontinuous edge means at the side suppose this is a building so this is a building in this this building is uh, divided into divided into various slab like that so if you take this middle slab so all the edges are continuous you see this is continuous every side it is continuous if you take this slab then these two edges are discontinuous and these two edges are continuous if you take this slab 1 2 3 these are continuous and this is a discontinuous okay so this is how what is the meaning of continuous and discontinuous so don't be confused with that okay bottom tension reinforcement so it is talking about the bottom reinforcement basically reinforcement are provided on in a slab at the top side also as well as at the bottom side also. so it is talking about the bottom tension reinforcement that means the reinforcement which we have calculated using the mx and my okay of miles of mid span in the middle strip shall extend to lower part of the slab to within 0.25 l this l may be in lx direction also as well as in ly direction also of a continuous edge or 0.15 l of a discontinuous edge okay this is given in this close the bar marked as b1 b2 b5 b6 in the given figure okay we will we'll show those figures now okay then you will understand first of all the reinforcements are provided at the middle strip whatever the a reinforcement we have calculated using the mx and my then it said that first cut type of bar it is talking about that the reinforcement which are provided the bottom side they are to be extended for a length of 0.25 l in case of continuous edge and 0.15 l in case of discontinuous edge okay so what it said in this case that the b1 b2 and b5 b6 okay why is the b1 b2 you see this this is b1 and this is b2 okay you see this length this length is how much 0.15 l from here to here look at this this is 0.15 l okay so this bar is extended for a length of 0 0.15 which side 0 0.15 l in case of a discontinuous edge that means this side is discontinuous this is the end part of a slab in this side 0 0.15 l but in this side it is to be extended for a length of 0 0.25 l okay so this is the middle strip and from here you see this is the end part of this bar and from here it is extended for a length of 0 0.25 l okay you see this this length is given this arrow marking are basically to show the dimension 0 0.25 l okay so this is the type of bar so in this figure we have seen if you see on the other figure because because both the figure are showing both the directions so this was b1 b2 and here b5 b6 we can see okay in the other directions so this was one direction ly only and this is in lx direction okay so this is b5 so this this part is discontinuous this part is continuous that's why cut is shown so this side you see this length will be 0 0.25 okay from here to here the length is 0 point so this length is 0 0.25 and this side length is how much 0 0.15 this side to this side length is 0 point one five okay so these are the bottom bar now if we see this in the section 
we can see this bar in the section also okay b1 b2 okay this is this is cutted in which which section this is section 1 1 okay and this is section 2 2 so here you will find b5 and b6 so these are the b5 and b6 okay section 2 2 and section here also you can see so b1 just uh, again if you see here what is that what is the section 1 1 and what is section 2 2 if you look at this and if you cut from this side this side if you cut it then it is section 1 1 so section 1 1 you can see b1 and b2 here are more bars are there in the middle strips okay so this is b1 b2 again there will be b1 then b2 like that alternative bars are given okay so if you cut it if you cut in this direction which bar you can see here you cannot see the b1 b2 because b1 b2 are parallel to this bar rather than you will find b5 and b6 that's why if you see here in section 2 2 this b5 and b6 are visible so b5 and b6 in the parallel to the uh, ly and b1 and, and b2 b2 are parallel to lx okay so that can be seen here so this is one type of that is given in clause number d1.4 okay now what is given in clause number d1.5 okay this is basically clause number d1.5 top tension enforcement bars top tension enforcement bars over the continuous edge of middle strip shall extend in the upper part of the slab for a distance 0.15 l from the support and at least 50 percent of this bar shall extend a distance of 0.3 l that is given in clause number d 1.5 bar marks d2 t2 t3 t5 t6 okay we will see what is the t2 t3 you see these are the bar t2 t3 so these are in the top side okay so this length you can see 0.3 l so 50 percent will be a length of 0.3 l and 50 percent will be length of 0.15 l so one is shown set t3 is for a length of 0.3 l then t2 will be for a length of 0.15 l okay we can see and t5 t6 similarly okay in the other direction same thing so you can see at the plan also where is those this is t5 t6 these are the top bar okay one is set t5 is shown here 0.15 l and t6 is shown here 0.3 l similarly you will find t1 and t2 okay t2 and t3 so t2 is shown 0.15 and t3 is shown as 0.3 okay so these are the top top bars are shown here by t and bottom bars are shown here by b okay so don't be confused so this was given in close number d 1.5 okay now we will go to the next close that is d 1.6 to resist the negative movement at a discontinuous s then means where the there is no extension of the edge of the slab this is edge depending on the degree of fixity at the edge of the slab the top tension enforcement bars equal to 50 percent of that provided at mid span shall extend 0.1 l into the span i am reading again what is said to resist the negative movement at the discontinuous edge depending on the degree of fixity at the edge of the slab top tension reinforcement bars equal to 50 percent of that provided at mid span so mid span may get how, whatever be the number of bars was given in mid span 50 percent of that shall extend for a length of 0.1 l into the span bar marks t1 and t4 okay so 50 percent of the bar at the discontinuous edge shall be extended for a length of 0.1 l on the top side you can see this uh, what was the number uh, number was t1 and t4 okay basically this uh, if you see this t1 okay so this is discontinuous bar for a length of how much 0.1 l okay so th this one is 0.1 l so you see from here to here a length is given 0.1 l okay so you can see this in this plan uh, no not this plan here also you cannot see here also you can see because here it is shown here okay this is not coming on the section that's why it is not visible on the section so this is t1 and similarly t4 you will find here t4 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 in the other direction this is t4 okay since our sections are not falling here that's why you cannot see on this section okay in this section it will not be visible but this side only we have to provide for a length of this this dotted line dot is shown right okay for a length of this 
okay this is the t1 okay though it is not following the section but if you take the front view of the section then we can see it so that's why it is shown here okay so this was the category of d1.6 next d1.7 the edge strip of each panel shall have reinforcing bars parallel to that edge satisfying the requirements of minimum amount and the requirements for tension the bottom and top bars of the edge strips are explained below what it is saying that we have to provide the minimum reinforcement of the slab as specified in the code books okay we know what is the minimum reinforcement that it should be minimum of 0.12 percent okay and also the guidelines given from d1.7 to d1.1 D is to be followed in the slab we know that minimum 1.12 percent of the cross section area of the reinforcement is to be provided in case of a what is called fe415 till and fe250 till it should be 0.15 percent in addition to that the guidelines given from d1.7 to d1.1 is to be followed what are those guidelines given first we will see d1.7 the bottom bars okay b3 and b4 in the figure are parallel to the edge along lx for the edge strip for span ly satisfying the requirements of minimum amount of steel okay just uh, you will see and uh, you will understand what i am trying to say is d1 uh, first figure b3 b4 okay see the first figure b3 and b4 this is b3 bar and this is b4 bar basically what it is saying that we have to provide minimum reinforcement so whether it is satisfying the minimum reinforcement criteria or, no, or not at the edge strip edge strip we have to provide the minimum reinforcement so that we have to provide okay so you have to see that the 0.12 percent of the uh, cross section area is to be satisfying so based on that we have to provide the reinforcement so this line or this line are the this okay so here this may be one there may be multiple line one one two three four more before this is one and there may be more lines are there so that is to be checked okay b3 and b4 so these are the similarly in this direction also this will be the one this b8 and then here the b7 will be the minimum reinforcement that we are providing okay okay uh, bottom bar b7 and b8 b8 are parallel to the edge along ly for the edge strip for span ly satisfying the requirements of minimum still okay that's what i said that this side okay next top bars t7 and t8 are parallel to the edge along lx for the edge strip for span ly satisfying the minimum requirements okay so again we have to check for the top side also that in edge we are providing a minimum reinforcement same t7 t8 and t9 t9 uh, t9 t t10 okay so if you see this that uh, t9 t7 t8 top bar this t7 and t8 similarly here it will be t10 and t9 these are the edge bars okay in the top side and bottom side both side the minimum reinforcement is to be criteria is to be satisfied okay so these are given in section 1 d 1.7 next d 1.8 is basically talking about the torsion reinforcement okay so we'll see how the torsion reinforcements are provided okay so give me a moment i will be back soon okay so the torsion bars that already i told earlier that it is given in the beginning so that i have found out so here the details of the torsion bars is given that is available in close number d 1.8 okay so defined situation comes so these situations are shown here c1 c2 and c3 what is this c1 in c1 what you can say that these two sides are discontinuous okay in c2 one side is discontinuous another side is continuous and c3 both sides are continuous okay two sides are continuous this is uh, continuous plus discontinuous here two discontinuous okay 
So, all three different situations are coming. So, for depending on the edges basically these are changing. Three different requirements for the Okay. What is said in first one? While the slab is discontinuous on both sides, the torsion reinforcement shall consist of top and bottom bars each with layers of bar placed parallel to the sides of the slab and extending a minimum distance of one fifth of the shorter span from the edge. The amount of reinforcement in each of the four layer shall be 75 percent of the area required for maximum mid span movement itself. So, what it is saying that at the corner we have to make mesh like this ok in corner we will be making a mesh so this c1 just i am extending it ok when both the edge are discontinuous what is saying that we have to give this distance a mesh of distance what is that distance that will be lx by 5 that is what it is said shall consider top and bottom bars of each layer of bars uh, extending a minimum distance of one fifth of the shorter span, one fifth of the shorter span. Similarly, this side also I have to give a minimum distance of Lx upon 5. So, there will be a mesh on the top side of the slab as well as on the bottom side of the slab, okay, with a distance of square Lx by 5, Lx by 5. And how much reinforcement is to be provided? 75 percent of the mid span reinforcement, whatever the reinforcement you are providing. 75 percent of that we have to take and we have to create a mesh here ok. So, 75 percent of that reinforcement we have to take here and we have to create a mesh in this both directions ok. And this mesh is to be provided on the top side of the slab as well as on the bottom side of the slab. This if, if this is my slab then here also in this corner also one extra mesh will be there, this corner also one extra mesh will be there ok. So, this is what it is said like. bottom bars each layer with bar placed parallel to the sides of the slab and extending a minimum distance of one fifth of the shorter span from the edge. The amount of reinforcement in each four layer shall be 75 percent of the area required for the maximum mid span reinforcement. Okay. So, maximum mid span reinforcement whatever it is 75 percent of this is to be provided in both the directions fine. So, this is for when both the edge are discontinuous. Next one is when one edge continuous and another edge is discontinuous ok. At corner C2 contained by edge over one of which is continuous ok. So, C2 is how one is continuous another is discontinuous ok. So, if I take this edge say this is continuous ok some more is there. Then what is said the torsion reinforcement shall be half of the amount of above ok. The Lx by 5 Lx by 5 will be same this is Lx by 5 this side also Lx by 5. But whatever the reinforcement we have provided earlier case it was 75 percent, now we will provide 37.5 percent ok. So, this is how it is to be done. <coughs> Next one, when both the edge is continuous, this edge and this edge are, this is also continuous, this is also continuous, torsion reinforcements are not required ok. So, this information is available in D 1.9, this information is available in D 1.1 ok and previous information was available at D 1.8. So, three defined sections are there for torsion reinforcement D 1.8, D 1.9 and D 1.0. So, D 1.8 saying that when both the edges are discontinuous, we have to provide torsion reinforcement on top layer as well as bottom layer with a mesh of length. Lx upon 5 minimum and with a minimum reinforcement of 75 percent of the reinforcement provided the mid span. When one edge is continuous and another edge is discontinuous, we to provide again this uh, torsion reinforcement the top layer and bottom layer with a mesh of both side length Lx by 5 Lx by 5 and a reinforcement of half of the previous one or we can say the 37.5 percent of the middle strip reinforcement. When both the edges are continuous we do not need to provide any kind of torsion reinforcements ok. So, this is the defined types of reinforcement that we need to provide in a slab ok. So, very simple thing I, I will tell you in a summary what is the design steps. Design step is that first you find out what is the effective length in both the direction of the slab. 
Now shorter one you assume as LX. Now find out the ratio of LY to LX. If you find this ratio is less than or equal to 2, it is a 2 way slab. If you find this ratio is more than or more than 2, then it is a design is a 1 way slab. In case of 1 way slab, what we have to do? We have to design it assuming it is a spanning in one way. That means in the other direction, one direction we have to design, the other shorter direction will be assumed it is a kind of uh, means we will provide the minimum reinforcement in the shorter directions okay and we will design it as a, a kind of guidelines provided in the beam we have to assume so, okay as, as a beam we are designing it basically when the LY upon LX is less than 2 we have to design this as a two way slab that means slab spanning in two directions the code book has given guidelines for restrained slab as well as the simple supported slabs for restrained slabs what is restrained slabs when the corner of the slabs are prevented from lifting. In that case, we have to calculate first we have to calculate the moment in x direction and moment in y directions. How to calculate mx is equal to a constant alpha x then unit load w into l x square. See we are taking the shorter span again I am telling and alpha x this alpha then my is equal to alpha y w again l x square. This alpha x or alpha y are some coefficient that is to be taken from table number 26. Okay. And then in table number 26, you will find that <coughs> there are defined ratio of Lx to Ly to Lx. Okay, and this there are eight different ratios are given for finding out the alpha x. That is initially they start from 1, 1, 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, then 1.75 and 2. For alpha y it is de not depending on the ratio of ly to lx but alpha y or ls whatever it is it is depending on the type of the support so depending on the type of the support there are nine defined types of panels mentioned in the code book so we, we have to see that which type of panels we are designing and accordingly we have to take the alpha x and alpha y value and depending on the ratio of ly to lx so we can design this we can find out the maximum bending moment this maximum bending moments are mainly applicable to the middle step. Could book is given a provision in D1.2 that the slab is to be designed into two parts. One is the middle step, another is the edge step. Middle step will be the 75 percent of the middle part, and the edge step in the both side will be 12.5 percent, 12.5 percent. Similarly, on the other direction also, middle step is the 75 percent, and the edge steps are 12.5 percent, 12.5 percent on the both sides. Okay. Once we have this information. Then what we have to do? We have to find out the reinforcement for the maximum bending moment for the middle step. And then we have to distribute the reinforcement as per the guidelines. What are the guidelines given? Uh, that is it is given in D1.4. D1.4 is saying that tension reinforcement provided at mid span in the middle step shall extend in the lower part of the slab <coughs> for a length of 0.25 L in case of a continuous and 0 for a length of 0.15 L in case of it in discontinuous. Then in D1.5 it is saying that for over the continuous edge of a middle strip the tension reinforcement shall extend in the upper part of the slab for a distance of 0.15 L from the support and at least 50 percent shall be extended for a length of 0.3 L. Similarly, the other guidelines that I have given you for the reinforcement part that you follow. Okay, so this is how you can find out the reinforcement for the different location. Then, if we have a simply supported slab, then also we can use the same formula for finding out the bending moment. Only thing is that the coefficient of alpha x and alpha y we have to take separately from table number twenty-seven, and this is not because the support type is same, simply supported everywhere is simply supported. So, irrespective of the type of the support, only it is depending on the ratio of LY to LX. Okay, here in this case, LX and L, alpha X and alpha Y both are depending on the ratio of LY to LX. So, accordingly, we can take the alpha X and alpha Y value from this table number 27 and we apply and then we can distribute the reinforcements. Okay, in case of simply supported beam, there are some exceptions are there for reinforcement that was not told where. So, in case of simply supported beam, one addition is there that at least 50 percent of the tension reinforcement provided at mid span 
should extend to the supports the remaining 50% extend to within 0.1 lx or 0.1 alloy of the alloy of the support as appropriate i am saying again at least 50% of the tension reinforcement provided at mid span should extend to the support okay so whatever the reinforcement we are providing at the middle span half alternative reinforcement are to be extended to the support and the remaining reinforcement are to be extended for a length of 0.1 l that's it okay tension reinforcement that is it is talking about the bottom reinforcement so this is how or this is what about the design of slab as per the is 456 2000 see we are not doing all the details of this because that we cannot cover in this course and uh, if you want to do exact analysis we have to go for yield line analysis of the slab then we can do more details on the slabs okay and this whatever the slabs design we have done right now these are the simplified methods of design of slabs as per the codal provisions okay regarding problem you take any example from any book and whatever i have discussed try to apply those concepts okay and take appropriate this panel which type of panel whether uh, how the edges are okay basically it is continuous or continuous or what type of that you take appropriately and apply those concepts okay if you have any issues contact with me i i'll help you for solving the problem if you find difficulties or otherwise whatever i have discussed you can go through okay so that's it for this course and this is the last part that i have covered for this uh, portion basically the slab portions okay solve the problem uh, any issue to discuss with me okay thank you All the best.